want them to do. At best, the term bullfighting is a misnomer, as there is little competition between the sword of the nimble matador, which is Spanish for killer, and a confused, maimed, psychologically tormented and physically debilitated bull. Many prominent former bullfighters report that bulls are intentionally debilitated with tranquilizers and laxatives, beatings to the kidneys and heavy weights hung around their necks for weeks before a fight. Some of the animals are placed in darkness for 48 hours before the confrontation, then are released blinded into the bright arena. In a typical event, the bull enters and is approached by men who exhaust and frustrate him by running him in circles and tricking him into collisions. When the bull is tired and out of breath, he is approached by picadors who drive lances into its back and neck muscles, twisting and gouging to ensure a significant amount of blood loss and impairing the bull's ability to lift his head. Then come the banderilleros, who distract and dart around the bull while plunging more lances into him. Weakened from blood loss, they run the bull in more circles until he is dizzy and stops chasing. Finally, the matador, this killer, appears and after provoking a few exhausted charges from the dying animal, tries to kill the bull with his sword. And this bloody form of amusement is bullfighting. The pleasure derived from all of these activities and sports, a communion with nature, some would say, can be secured without harming or killing animals. The commercial exploitation of wildlife erroneously assumes that the value of wild animals is reducible to their utility relative to human interests especially economic interests. But wild animals are not a renewable resource, having value only relative to human interests. That perception can only be that of a speciesist. Nevertheless, these practices exist only because we do not take seriously the interests of other animals. In this light, are humans not the most callous speciesist of all? The term vivisection is used to apply to all types of experiments on living animals and is said to be a form of medical science. The reason for experimentation of this type is to allegedly discover cures for human ailments and illnesses. But those who hope to find remedies for human ills by inflicting deliberate sufferings on animals commit two fundamental errors in understanding. The first is the assumption that results obtained on animals are applicable to mankind. The second concerns the inevitable fallacy of experimental science in respect to the field of organic life. Since animals react differently from human beings, every new product or method tried out on animals must be tried out again on man through careful clinical tests before it can be considered safe. This rule knows no exceptions. Tests on animals are not only dangerous because they lead to wrong conclusions, but furthermore, they retard clinical investigation, which is the only valid kind. Just remember the fact that any disease deliberately provoked is unlike any disease that arises spontaneously. Unfortunately, such methods still sail today under the flag of science, which is an insult to true science, as well as human intelligence.
And so, vivisection applies to medical experiments. Done with the administration of noxious substances. Electric or traumatic shocks. Unanesthetized operations. Burns. Drawn out deprivations of food and drink. Physical and psychological tortures that lead to mental imbalance, infections, and so on. Head injury research involves partially or fully conscious baboons strapped down with restraints and their heads cemented into a metal helmet which will be thrust at a 60 degree angle at a force of up to 1,000 Gs. The purpose of this experiment is to simulate auto crashes, football, boxing, and other head-related injuries. And this process is often repeated again and again on the same animals. And finally, military research. This one speaks for itself. From sending monkeys into outer space and testing atomic blasts on helpless dogs to exposing primates to nuclear radiation. Twenty years ago, the number of animals dying of tortures through the practice of vivisection was astronomical. Estimated at 400,000 per day worldwide and growing at an annual rate of 5%. Today that number is almost beyond comprehension. 19,000 per minute, 10 billion per year. Some uneducated persons pretend to know that less intelligent animals don't feel pain the same way we do. In truth, we know very little about how specific animals may feel except that they must also submit to the universal law that causes every organism dying by unnatural means to suffer greatly before that final release. But it's nonsense to say that animals do not suffer because they have a lower order of intelligence. Pain is pain, conveyed by nerves to the brain and there are other nerves than those of intelligence. Nerves such as sight, smell, touch, and hearing. And in some animals, these nerves are much more highly developed than in man. We know that there has never been an epoch in which we could learn something about the physiology of man by torturing animals. We only learn something about animals. And if there is something we can learn from